I'm, I'm John, I'm the design director um, of Abode Interiors. We're a small specialist design company that design predominantly for new build developers um, across the UK. So we've completed the tallest penthouse in Manchester and it was just a really great space, double storey duplex penthouse apartment and we just wanted something that was quite dramatic, quite moody, quite masculine but just with little bits of humour and little, little bits of fun dropped in. The next process or the next part of the process when we get the email from the client um, is literally to sort of clear the decks, um, sit down with the plans, sit down with the brief, add a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and, and sort of literally clear your mind and go through everything because the interior all starts with the layout or the best layout that you can possibly do. We clear off all the architects drawings and lines and doodles and just look at the space as a whole and then see where we want the furniture to be. Um, and there's, there's you know, some really ob obvious considerations of where you're gonna have the dining room, where you're gonna have the living room, but there's, um, there's other things where, like say, say with this penthouse, you'd probably want to sit there watching your TV but you'd also want to look out the window because the view's great. So, um, you know, if we put the sofa with its back to the window and you're facing inwards, you just wouldn't get the best out of the apartment. So there's lots of sort of simple things like that with, with the furniture layout that we start as the absolute first point. And then we move on to all the, um, the fun bits of what we want it to feel like, what we want it to look like, what sort of mood we want to create. And once we've sort of decided that, then it kind of narrows down what could be a million choices of furniture and lights and fabrics. It actually narrows it down to quite a small amount of things. So, you know, if we wanted something that was moody and dark and dramatic, you know, we're not necessarily going to be using light fabrics or really bright and colourful fabrics. So we can just pin that down to a really sort of niche amount of choices. Um, you know, and then we can really go into the details of what sofa do we want, to, what sort of detailing do we want to put on it, what sort of stitch, what sort of colour, um, and really, really drive down into the details. This is the design studio. So um, in here we have um, all the fabrics and wallpapers that we use in the, in the schemes. And the designers will basically pull together um, all of the furniture from a, a variety of suppliers, um, pull the scheme together. And what we do is we mood board um, each room so um, with a typical design board you'll have all the key pieces of furniture like you know dining tables chairs the lights the curtains and then all the fabrics um, and paint colors and everything really clearly labeled so when the client sees the scheme they know exactly what they're going to get room by room so yeah with the with the layout so we we literally start with a blank plan to begin with and then we sort of start putting in all of the furniture to scale um, but in this instance the um, developer actually had the dining area over here near the kitchen um, and the living space over here but we actually swapped it around because it makes like a nicer sort of feel having um, the corner sofa there you've got the tv in it there but you get the views out of the window and then just going through the boards um, room by room um, as we'd said earlier we just try to do what you see is what you get and illustrate to the clients each sort of element of the interior so you've got um, bespoke media unit that will be these finishes with the backlighting with the accessories the general feel of the room um, with the sofa the coffee table and also the artwork we kind of had like a a loose sort of um, skiing theme that's coming throughout. So with the boards, they are literally what you see is what you get, and they, they are a, a true reflection of the interior that we install. I think the, the things that probably set us apart from our competitors, when we set up, we wanted to make abode um, zero hassle for customers. So they could just say, look, we've got this penthouse that needs dressing. Here's the plans, here's the brief, here's the budget. Um, you know, it's what you guys do. Can you just do it? And then the whole abode machine goes into action. Everything gets ordered. Everything starts coming into the warehouse. The stylists 
um, start the process of buying accessories, of everything coming together. And then on the chosen day, everything gets installed and, and typically we install within three to five day period. So that, that sort of sets us apart that we try and be zero hassle. The other side that sets us apart is the design side. So I think where lots of design companies will choose very nice products, very nice fabrics, very nice things, and that's great. We, we try and do a reasonable amount of bespoke items and interesting things because we don't just want to provide a standard headboard or a standard sofa. You know, we want to do things that are sort of custom and fitted and are really interesting and are really design led. So, um, you know, there's certainly that aspect to what we do as well. I'm James Healy and I'm the owner of Premier League Decorators Limited and we're based out of Colchester, Essex. Manchester's a beautiful place though, to be able to be up this high and see across it all. Makes it more rewarding working in a building like this, overseeing what you're seeing. Uh, the brief of the car, we normally get a, a schedule of works and a description of the works with details set out of where, which wallpapers go and which walls and which areas. So we have base it on that. Uh, we obviously load out each room individually with the wallpaper specifically for that and then it's feature walls only here in this one whereas others it can be full painting and wallpaper but this one is solely on feature walls in every room. Generally when everything's done off drawings then all we get told is what we're to hang and the element of the side of things, some patterns can vary on the drop length which then can in turn affect the length and the height of the wall so someone could have measured it on the basis that it will take three or four drops to put up, but in theory, the pattern could be so vast that you end up only doing two drops, so you need more wallpaper. This is one of the better ones because it's more straightforward. Done quite a few up here in this building, and generally, it's not a problem. Once you're in, you're in. You get the job done, it's pretty straightforward. My name's Paul Banks. I'm a freelance curtain fitter. So I work for a variety of companies, soft furnishing companies, interior design companies. It's amazing views um, on a clear day. Not today though, but uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just, I mean, it's the same job, just uh, different scenery. Well, when you're on the 64th floor and you've got three meter tracks to put up, you're hoping you can get them into the lift. Otherwise it's 128 flights of stairs to go up, which, I didn't fancy. The popular one we use now is, is, is what's up here, which is the flat-headed curtains, uh, the wave curtains, as, as, as we call them. They are really popular. The ceiling fixed tracks, um, they're not gathered up or anything. They're, 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 if you flay them out, they're just completely flat, but they create, because of the, the way the track is, it creates a, a, a wave. <music> My name's Matthew and I work for Interiors by Bode uh, and I'm an interior stylist. For me, what's uh, been different working on the 64th floor has been height. Um, usually I'm used to two floors. For someone that's terrified of heights, um, it's been a little bit of a uh, difference, but it's absolutely stunning, um, especially when I was here late last night and just seeing all the lights, it was just beautiful. The only challenges that we've actually had uh, for this install was actually getting everything up. Yeah, usually if we've got problems with anything, it's only got to go up one flight of stairs. The light behind me, um, imagine that we need scaffolding for things like that and you can't really necessarily get that in a lift. So yeah, you just hope that everything can fit. So for dressing this apartment compared to any other apartment that I've dressed, this one, because it's for the rental market, you can't cover it with absolutely every accessory known to man. It needs to be more statement pieces and not as much dressing. So whatever you do buy needs to have impact. So that's the main sort of thing on this one, that not everything's dressed and whatever is dressed looks amazing. Uh, so we are in the double height living room um, where we have a bespoke sofa as well as the bespoke coffee tables. Um, just lots of lounging in here. Um, we've got the bespoke media unit as well. Then with accessories wise, again, not trying to overcrowd it. So yeah, the wallpaper um, is from a brand 
called, and I'm gonna try and pronounce this correctly, Moy, and it features all extinct animals. Um, so for me, this was the start of where I was actually gonna buy everything um, from. So not only is it quite a masculine scheme, um, featuring kind of coffee colors, um, you've got these great burgundies, oranges, which then again, pick up in certain accessories, not too heavily, because um, otherwise it would be conflicting with that. It's just that little cheeky nod on every room. Uh, so through Double Doors to Bedroom One, this is a really nice, big space. Um, so it was quite nice to actually do a lot of darker colors for here. Um, again, it's a masculine scheme, but usually with room sizes, you can't do too much dark stuff because it makes a room look really, really small. Um, here, you don't have that problem. You've got these huge windows, um, bringing in all that light and yeah, just a massive room. Again, it's just because it's in Manchester, it doesn't have to reflect that it's everything's Manchester. You might have someone here that isn't from Manchester. Um, so you kind of need to feature other things in there that are a little bit more playful. So travel, like obviously someone that's gonna live here, they travel. Um, so yeah, those sort of pieces, it's cheeky, it's fun, and it's not what you see in every place. Um, I'll probably say the ones downstairs are gonna be my favorite. The reason why this is my favorite bedroom is purely for this, despite not liking heights. Um, yeah, it gets a little bit worse as you walk out onto here, but it is a stunning space overlooking the living room. And yeah, just my left's a little winter garden. Um, so you've got all these plants here. It's a little bit of a space to relax. You can imagine just shutting all of these curtains, shutting away Manchester and just sitting here and just chilling for a little bit. So yeah, this is probably my favorite bit. My favorite part of the process is when it finally all comes together. Um, so we buy everything, hope um, that it comes in on time and also the height that it says. And um, we lay it all out and it looks great, um, but then it's very different when it's on a dining table or in the scheme. Um, you just hope that everything works. Um, so when all the installers have gone away, you get to have that little breathing moment, take it all in and go, actually this does look really, really cool and you buy yourself and it's lovely.